welcome to the e-sikshana program of uh, vtu and uh, in this course we would be uh, dealing with the third module of the course on transmission and distribution so in this session i would be dealing with the performance analysis of short transmission lines so in the previous uh, session um, i had discussed about the classification of lines into short medium and long so one is from the length of the line of course that is the uh, the names themselves are indicator the other is also from a modeling perspective so we can just say a short line model is one way we do not model the capacitance of the line the capacitance of the line is not modeled clear so we will see in this class how do we um, uh, obtain the generalized uh, circuit constants for such models and um, how do we uh, get the efficiency and regulation etc so amongst the line models this is the simplest model this is the simplest model so let us see what it is now let me just take the pen okay so this is the short circuit model so again it is short line model so here r is the lump resistance of the line and x is the lump reactance of the line so i told you that for a transmission line we specify the resistance and reactance per kilometer so if you multiply it by the length of the line you get the value the lumped value of r and the lumped value of x so this is the simplest model where the line is simply modeled as a series impedance a series impedance the capacitance is shunt between the line and the ground we neglect that this is called as the short line model right so now let me draw the phasor diagram for this now one thing i have noticed is whenever students draw the phasor diagram many a time they try try to memorize it like you know how to you 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 try to get a picture of the phasor diagram and memorize whereas if you do it systematically it is much easier to draw by yourself you don't have to memorize everything clear so now i have drawn the phasor diagram i'll tell you how to draw it how to draw it right so in all these diagrams whenever you draw any phasor diagram you should start off with the reference which is the reference phasor you want to consider clear so now here let us start with the receiving end voltage so i will start with my receiving end voltage as the reference vector so what do you do i'm just telling you the step by step procedure to draw the phasor diagram so what do you do you draw oa this is it that is the magnitude of oa is the magnitude of the receiving end phasor receiving end voltage phasor you can take whatever scale you want right next so once i draw vr what is the next thing i know the current so what is the receiving end current the receiving end current is determined by the load so the load may be specified as simply rl rx or it may be given your power output of the load with the power factor may be given or the kva and the power factor may be given clear so whatever is the data given you can find out what is the power factor of the load uh, remember one thing that most of the loads are inductive in nature your motors and your lighting loads um, they are all inductive in nature and many of the heating loads geysers furnaces um, etc they would all be resistive in nature so let us assume now it's a reactive load inductive reactive load and so next you draw the phasor ir okay the phasor ir uh, at an angle phi r which is determined by the power factor of the load right so you draw vr and ir 
Now, the next thing after that you have to do is you have to go back backwards. So I have taken the receiving end voltage as the reference. So I have to keep going back and seeing what are all the voltage drops I would encounter till I reach the sending end. So now if you see this IR and IS are the same here. Clear? So your, your sending end current also would be the same. This is also the sending end current because there is no shunt path. The sending end current and receiving end current are identical. So what are all the drops I have? I have a drop here, right? And a drop in the resistor and a drop in the inductor. Okay. Now, what's the current flowing through this R and X? It is IR. Now, how does the drop across a resistor, what is the nature of the drop across a resistor? It is in phase with the current flowing through it, right? The drop across any resistor is in phase with the current flowing through it. So, and what is the drop magnitude? It's equal to IR into R, right? So I know the drop across the resistor. It will be in phase with IR, that means parallel to it. So next, draw a vector from VR. Why from, from the tip of VR? Because the sending end voltage is equal to the receiving end voltage plus the drop in the resistor and the drop in the reactor. This reactance X is due to the inductance of the line. So I have the receiving end voltage. Now to this, I have to add the drop across the resistor. So you see, and what should be the direction of it? What should be the phasor location parallel to IR? So you see, I have added a, vec a phasor parallel to IR and the magnitude of the phasor is IR into R, right? Next, what should I do? To this, I have to add, to this, I have to add the drop across the reactance. So what is the drop across the reactance? IR into X. And what is its angle? Its angle leads IR by 90 degrees. Its angle leads IR by 90 degrees. So here I have drawn this. See, I have drawn this leading IR by 90 degrees. This is the phasor direction of IR along which I also have drawn the drop across the resistor. Now leading it by 90 degrees, because in an inductor, you know the voltage drop lacks the current through the inductor. I have IR into X. Now you simple, you have Vs. Vs is Vr plus IR into R plus IR into X. Right? So now let me erase all this. So you are now over. See how simple it is, how simple it is to draw the phasor diagram. Not at all complicated. Don't have to memorize it. You can easily draw it. Right. So now from with this phasor diagram, we will try to uh, get some equations. I'll try to get some equations. So basically, I want to know what is this Vs. And, and what is phi s? Phi s is this total angle. This total angle. Angle between Vs and IR. Because IR and IS are same, are same. So that is phi S. So phi S is the sending end power factor angle. Phi R is the receiving end power factor angle. And from the geometry, you can see this is phi R and this is also phi R. Yeah, fine. Now let's see what is the magnitude of Vs. One way is I can draw a graph and I can calculate if I draw it to scale. Is there any other way to do it? We'll try to get an expression for v Vs. So Vs, if you see, is if I, if, I, if I take this right angle triangle, OCE, right? So it will be OA plus AD plus DE. So this OE completely is OA plus AD plus DE. So one side of this right angle triangle is this. And the other side is CE. Now CE is nothing but CF minus CE. Okay, sorry, minus EF will give me CE. So I will try to see what each one of these components are. Now what is AD? AD, look at this geometry. So this is IR into R. 
Therefore, AD will be IR into R into cos phi R. Right? AD is IR into R into cos phi R. Now, BF, BF is IR into X, that is this BC, IR into X into sin phi R. Clear? So I know now what is OE. OE is what? OA is VR. AD is IR R cos phi R. And TE is IR X sin phi R. Right? Now, what is CF? The entire CF. So if you look at this triangle, B, B, C, and F. If you look at this triangle, CF, CF is nothing but IR into X into cos phi R. This is IR into X into cos phi R. And what is EF? EF is same as DB. And what is DB? So if you look at this triangle, ADB, DB is IR into R sin phi R. Right? I R into R sin phi R. So now I have all the components for me to write the relevant equation. Okay. So you see here, D E B F is I R X sin phi R. This one, this is I R X sin phi R. This B F, which is equal to B E. And then E F D B is equal to I R into R sin phi R. So V S squared is O C squared. That's is equal to O E squared plus C E squared. And o, o E is O A plus A D plus D E. And C E is C F minus E F. Okay. So we have all the components. I have V S squared is equal to V R plus I R R cos phi R plus I R X sine phi R whole squared plus this. And so V S is the square root of this. This will only give you the magnitude. It does not give you the angle. It does not give you the angle. Please remember that. Fine. But this is anyway for regulation and all. We only need to deal with the magnitude. So this is good enough for you to know what will be the magnitude of the sending and voltage. So normally what we do, I have a line. Now I know what is the receiving end voltage. I know what is the load. So I determine what should be the sending end voltage to get this receiving end voltage. If my sending end voltage is less than that, then my VR will be less than what I have designed it for. So this formula is enough for you to give, get such idea. Now you can also calculate VS using phasor rotation, notation as VS is equal to VR plus IR into Z. So here I have put in bold. So whatever I put in bold, VS, VR, IR, all these are phasor quantities. All these are phasor quantities. So if I take VR as the reference, VR as the reference, it will be VR at an angle of 0 degrees. I take that as the reference angle. Then IR is IR at an angle of minus 5R degrees. Why minus? Why minus? Because I have taken lagging loads. I told you most of the loads are lagging loads. And Z is equal to R plus JX. So this simple arithmetic I can do. And when I solve this way, I actually get the phasor VS. I get the phase of Vs. Okay. So here what have I done? I have done the same thing. I have written as Vs plus Ir. Ir is at an angle of minus cos phi r. So it would become Ir into cos phi r minus j sine phi r into r plus jx. Here. So now I have this. So now you see, I'm actually getting the phasor of Vs. And let us see the terms. Look at the first terms. Vr plus Ir, R plus phi R plus Ir, X sine phi R, which is the same as here, Ir, X sine phi R. And the second term is this. Therefore, in this equation, in this equation, I can write it in phasor form as if this is the first term, first term plus J times second term. So you can get it. So I have this, okay? This is called as the exact equation for the sending end voltage. 
Now I can make it approximate. Sometimes you don't need very accurate values. Like I don't need to know whether the sending end voltage is 32.325 kV. Maybe 32.32 kV is good enough for me. So I can make some approximations. So in the approximation, what we do is you know, we neglect this quadrature term. We neglect this quadrature term. In the problems, we'll see how, how much this approximation will uh, affect. How much this approximation will affect us. Okay. So this is the quadrature term. If I neglect, I only have this. So this is an approximate expression for the S. Right. Now from the phasor diagram, we'll see one more relationship. Okay. Now, Vs cos phi s. What is Vs cos phi s? So this is Vs. This is Vs, right? And this whole thing is phi s. So if I, if I just expand it like this, let me just expand it like this, right? Let me choose a different color so that you can see. Yes. So now... This, this is, this is Vs cos phi s, this blue thing, whatever I have written. So how can I split it? I can write it as this. This plus this. So what is this component? Just see what is this component? This component is what? This is Vr, this is phi r. So this is, this much is Vr. Let, let me just put some name here. Let me call this as O dash. Okay, O dash. So O, O dash is Vr cos phi r. And this part of the vector, this vector, this is anyway parallel to this. So that is Ir into r. Here, why I'm doing this, you will see shortly, I can get one more nice expression, relationship between the magnitudes of Vs and um, Vr. So I have Vs cos phi s is equal to Vr cos phi r plus Ir into r. Right? Magnitudes. All these are magnitudes. Vs, Vr are all magnitudes, not phasor quantities. So I get the relationship between the magnitudes of the sending end voltage and receiving end voltage. So this is another, another expression which you may find useful when you want to do some problems. So basically up to this point, you just have to uh, remember two things. The expression for Vs, you don't even try to memorize. You can derive it in one minute if you know how to draw the phasor diagram. And the approximate sending end voltage and another relationship between the sending end voltage and the receiving end voltage. Yeah, fine. Next, let us try to find the ABCD constants. So what are the, how did we define the generalized constants? Vs is equal to AVR plus BIR. And I, IS is equal to C B R plus B I R. That was our relationship. So now that is the generalized relationship. Now for the short circuit model, what do I have? We have just now seen V S is equal to V R plus I R into Z. And I S is equal to I R. Right? So, yeah. so now if you see here, Yes, if you see here, Vs is AVR, so A is 1, right, plus B is IR, so B is Z. So Vs is AVR plus BIR, so B is Z. Next, Is is equal to IR, so Is is equal to CVR, CVR, it doesn't depend on VR, so C is 0, and IR into D. So D is 1, right? So now you can check A is equal to D for the ABCD constants and AD minus BC is equal to 1. So this, what we have seen, this is the generalized circuit constant for a short line model, for a short line model. Clear? Good. Now, let us see here. Percentage regulation, we have defined it as Vs minus Vr by Vr into 100. So if I take the approximate model, if I, if I look at this approximate model, just see here, if you see this model, 
Vs minus Vr is equal to Ir into R cos pi R plus Ir x sine phi R. So I know what is the voltage drop approximate, right? So I can approximately write the regulation as Ir into R cos pi R. That is, this is Vs minus Vr divided by Vr into 100. This is for lagging loads, which is the case most often, okay? And if the load is leading, then this plus becomes some minus. So I have IR into R cos pi R minus IR into X sine pi R by VR into 100. So this is for leading loads. Okay. So I have the regulation for lagging loads and leading loads. Now you have you have the entire short circuit, it's so a short transmission line model. So first I have the expression for the sending end voltage. I have the ABCD constants, you know the phasor diagram and you know the expression for regulation and you can find the efficiency because I know the power. I know VR, I know IR, I know VS, I know IS, cos pi R, cos pi S. So from that I can calculate the power and calculate the efficiency also. Clear? So for any of the models, whether it is the short line or medium line model, you need to know all these things. The, the model, that is the circuit, circuit and from the circuit, you get the phasor diagram. From the phasor diagram, you derive the expression for Vs. And you also obtain the ABCD parameters. And once you know the ABCD parameters, you can calculate the transmission line efficiency and regulation. This is the step-by-step -step thing we develop. Now, can you have a zero regulation? Yes, I can have. Zero regulation means what? When the sending end voltage is equal to the receiving end voltage, right? So when can it be? Obviously, it cannot be here because I have a positive value on top, so it can never be zero. Whereas with leading load, with leading load, right, the numerator can be zero because I have a minus sign here. When is this zero? When IR into R cos phi R, obviously, is equal to IR into X sine phi R. When these two terms are equal, when these two terms are equal, the numerator becomes zero and I get um, the regulation as zero. So from this, I can write tan phi R is R by X. So what does this mean? At a receiving end power factor given by tan phi R equal to R by X and that, that phi R should be leading. It's only for a leading load. The regulation is zero, means regulation is zero, means the input voltage will be equal to the output voltage. The sending end voltage will be equal to the receiving end voltage. Clear? Now let's see whether I can get something on tan phi R, something R by X, does it look familiar to you? Now Z is equal to what R plus JX. So what is the angle theta of Z tan inverse of X by R? So when you, whenever you have an impedance R plus JX, you know the impedance angle is equal to tan inverse of X by R. So the impedance angle is tan theta is X by R. And the power factor angle at which the regulation becomes zero is given by tan phi R is equal to R by X. So from these two, I can write the relationship phi R is equal to phi minus theta. So at this particular angle, phi r equal to phi minus theta, the regulation, when it is leading, will become zero. Okay, we have derived that relationship. Now, how do I calculate the efficiency? Simple. Efficiency, you know, is output power by input power into 100. And that's also equal to output power by input power plus losses into 100. Right? Sorry, output power by output power plus losses into 100 because output power plus losses is input power. Or rather, you can say the input power goes to give deliver the output and the losses. And how can you calculate the output power? In terms, uh, in single phase, it is simply Vr, Ir, cos pi R. And input power is Vs, Is, cos pi S. And for three phase, root 3 Vrl, Irl, cos pi R. And input power is root 3 Vsl, Isl, cos pi S. These are line voltages. If you take phase voltages, then it would again be three times Vr, Ir, cos pi R. We have already seen this in the previous session. 
I hope now it is clear. So the short line model is the simplest model for the transmission line. Now let's take one example in this uh, session and we'll see some more in the uh, subsequent uh, sessions. Okay, so a single phase line, a single phase line delivers a power of 100 kilowatts at 6.6 .6 kV.9 kF lag. Copper conductors with resistivity of 1.725 into 10 to the power of minus 6 ohms centimeter and area of cross section 0.8 centimeter squared are used. The transmission efficiency is 95% means determine the length of the line. So the first thing when you do these problems is you should know how to interpret the data. So I'm saying a single phase line delivers 100 kilowatts. That means it is the receiving end power. At 6.6 .6 kV, receiving end voltage, 0.9 PF lag. If that lag is omitted also, then you understand that it is lag. Unless otherwise mentioned, the load is always lagging load, inductive load. Clear? Now your conductor resistivity and cross section will be in centimeter squared. It will be. So the units are different. So be very careful when you use the units. When you use the units. On one side, I have kilovolts, kilowatts, and you may have kilometers for the length of the line. And when it comes to the conductor, you might have the resistivity, etc., in terms of centimeter, centimeter squared. So let us see, very simple. Or it is basically network theory, nothing, nothing extraordinary about uh, transmission and distribution. So first you write all, what all data you know, right? I know PR, okay? So um, uh, I know the receiving end power is 100 kilowatts and it is single phase. So what is IR? P by V, V is 6.6 .6 kV by cos phi. PR by VR cos phi R. Cos phi R is 0.9. So I get IR is 16.835 amperes. Hmm? Good. What is the efficiency? Efficiency is 0.95. So what is PS? What is efficiency? Efficiency is output power by input power. So I can find out the input power because I know the efficiency. Remember here, when you use power, you should use kilowatts. The efficiency is for kilowatts, not KVA. Don't do output KVA by input KVA. That will give you wrong answer. Efficiency is output power, watts, kilowatts by input power. So PS is simply efficiency is 95%. So 100 by 0.95, that is 105.263 kilowatts. So my input is 105.263 kilowatts. Output is 100 kilowatts. So why the difference? That's because of the loss, right? So the loss is 5,263 watts or 5.263 kilowatts, okay? Then let the resistance of the conductor be R ohms and the line losses, the line losses is equal to 2i squared r, 2i squared r, okay? Now, yes, line resistance is r, and why 2? Why not just i squared r? Why 2i squared r? Because it's a single phase. And remember in single phase, you have a forward conductor and you have a return conductor. So the total loss in the line will be 2 into I squared R for two conductors. Therefore, the loss is 2, 2 into I, I is 16.835 squared into R, right? So that gives you 5263. So I find out R is equal to 9.285 ohms. The resistance of the line is 9.285 ohms. Fine. Next, what is the length? Length, you know, R, L is, R is equal to rho L by A. Right? So L is equal to R A by rho. R is 9.285. Area of cross section is in centimeter square. So 0.8. And resistivity is in ohm centimeter. If they're of different units, you have to suitably convert. So I get everything in centimeters. See? Because this is these two are in centimeters. Right. 
So that is equal to 43.06. You'll get 43.06 kilometer. Now my question is, is this model okay? The model I have taken. The answer is yes, because the line length is not very large. The line length is less than 100 kilometers. So short line model is good enough for this. So that is good. And uh, next, it is 6.6 .6 kV. So the voltage is also less than 20 kilovolts. So I can use the short line model. And this is how you do the human. Okay. So in this session, I presented to you the short line model and how to calculate the ABCD uh, uh, parameters. And we did one numerical example. So in the next sessions, I'll be presenting some more examples.